Hello, I love Pokemon Emeralds here. Now, before I start anything, i got to explain why I have not been uploading in over a month. Um, quite simply because being busy with work, being busy getting new models, and also the fact I got kittens running around the house like madmen. I'm not even joking on that last one. Uh, <laughs> caught one in here. Uh, the other day wondering what the heck a signal was and was just trying to gnaw on it and yeah how it got up here I have no idea considering they're about maybe that long <laughs> and they can't climb very well so yeah uh oh anyways basically this is an update as well as an apology for not uploading <laughs> So, might as well get around to it. Uh, what's the update, anyway? On the layouts. Namely, the main and the micro. So, let's talk about updates. Okay, so work on the main layout. Um, there hasn't actually been any, if I'm honest. There has actually been none. Zick, not a zilch, goose egg, nope, none. Just quite by the board. Um, because I haven't been using it that much really. But uh, if and when I can, I'm going to swap out these curve points for more Pico Streamline ones, which should help overall running, as well as a cock up I made when I uh, redid the track plan. Because the curves are now too tight for my 9F. Uh, the old setup I had, 9Fs could get around, no sweat, so yeah, I made a right flummox with that one. Secondly, the electrics, I'm also going to improve on them as well. And thirdly, a better control system for the camera, because this only does 100 seconds, which is a minute and 40 seconds, so bugging me. But, there are ways around that. Going old school. Right, and by going old school, I mean simply, well, doing this. And simply just doing the old touch screen on the camera. Which I'm quite used to, really. And just noticed it's getting dark here in New Zealand. And I haven't bothered turning on any lights, so. Easy sort. <laughs> right, as that's for the main layout sorted. Um, as for the micro, yeah, I can see it from here because it's literally right under the baseboard, and um, I've got to get a whole heap of junk off it first. Well, I wouldn't exactly call this junk, but these original grey fire Elmas coaches. I've been seeing them on me on the micro layer for a while now, so oh boy. As well as some track on track pieces, uh, loco boxes, KD's specialized pliers for their couplers, a local cradle, and a light that I actually use from time to time, so I'll leave that down. But yeah. I gotta do a lot of tidying up, if anything, because the layout, as we can see here, it's a. Okay, one thing I forgot is that stupid uh, remote control for the tripod, which I turned off. It turns itself off after a minute forty, and uh, yeah, bugger. Anyways, back to the main flipping point of things. Um. Review videos and special writing sessions, as it were. Um, got two in the works at the moment. So, yeah. Uh, possibly three. Looking at doing a redo of a locomotive that has actually been quite popular on my channel. And I'm thinking of doing one of a similar type, but one I've worked on. Not a real thing. No, 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 no. I mean, a model I've tweaked, as it were. 
And uh, as for running sessions, I've got two possible ones to do. Um, tank engine turmoil, and as the name suggests, it's about tank engines. From something as small as my pugs, a uh, pug or peckets, um, to something, perhaps what's the largest tank engine I've owned? I'd say something about the size of the V1 tank, maybe? Maybe bigger? I don't know. The Southern Railway Baltic tanks, I know they were huge, but you can't get them in ready to run form. Anyway, the other running session will be preserved parrot. No, no, not preserved parrot at best. I'm still trying to work on the tail, but um, basically it's a video about preserved locomotives. If you can think of a better title, please comment below. I do ask you that, because um, I am rusty and running uh, low on ideas, I'm afraid to say. Uh, but I will promise you, the viewers, this one thing before 2020 is over, even though it is the crappiest year on record. But uh, I was looking through my uh, Hornby 2020 catalogue. I could not help but notice the quite sizable range of things they have for the centenary year. I mean, just the locos all alone. Oh my good God. Beautiful. They are beautiful. But yeah, I mean, a Hornby book of trains. I've actually seen how much one of those costs. Eyes off. I ain't paying it 90 bucks for a book. Not even if it's an all for autographed original of War and Peace. Buzz off. Um, okay, the Rovix set. That's actually attempting. That's actually attempting one that. Because I know a guy who has an original Rovex complete set. And I think that and this set are the only chances you can get of getting a Princess Royal in BR Black. Otherwise, there would be green, crimson, I mean, hell, even blue. And I just said, oh, dang it. Um, Gold-plated clan line, that's a kind of a double-edged sword, that one. Because if you run it, you just risk screwing up the gold plating. Don't run it, then why bother getting it? Now, that might offend some collectors, but I like to run what I get. If I can't do that, I don't bother putting any money towards it at all. None. Okay, the, the photo style packet. I do love that. I do love the look of that. Smokey Joe, pass. Uh, the Terry, on the other hand, I mean, it is a beautiful locomotive. The Terry is that beautiful. The Rocket, if I can, yeah, but okay, the 9F, no. I, for some reason, I just don't like Hornby 9Fs. Give me a Barkman any day. Okay. Here's one I actually missed a chance again of. So, sorry if I can't get this one. The Hornby Duchess of Athol. Centenary Edition. In the classic Candy Strike Duplo box. I had one in three chance again one of these. Until the model shop sold them all off. Within a day. There's a good thing I uh, didn't miss out on getting them though. Uh, 560 bucks for one of them. Now that is a lot of money for one for a specific locomotive. I agree it is the first time Hornby have used tin, well basically tin plate molding for a loco body. Well in this age it's proper die cast, so a proper die cast body which is about 200 grams heavier than the standard setup, which would mean it will haul quite the train. But I cannot justify the price for something like that. I just really can't. Uh, well, the O gauge uh, stuff, yeah, no way in heck. For one, I don't have O gauge track, two, nor does the model club, and three, here in New Zealand, those are like a grand each. So, no way. No way, no way. No way on this earth, mate. 
the A4 set, I think that's the only, apart from the Terrier and the Picket, that's uh, one of the free choices I have, really. It's a beautiful set. You get a top-of-the-line locomotive and rolling stock. You get track. Nice. A controller. I might be able to use that for the micro. And, um... Yeah, I mean, why not? Really, why not? And I've actually had a look online of my local model shop for one of those. 500 bucks. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty mad, but oh well. But I do make you this, I do cross my heart when I say this. I promise you, the viewers, before 2020 is over, I will have reviewed one of those Hornby Centenary models. And if I do not fulfill that promise, then, and I do mean this in a very literal sense, because I always try to make sure I keep to my promises. But if I fail to keep this promise, then, I'll let a certain viewer of mine, and, I, he, and he knows who he is, because I bump into him at the model club quite often. I'll let him choose what's the next review video. As well as the next running session. Usually I try and plan these at least a month ahead. But if he chooses a certain locomotive that I have not reviewed yet, but have in my collection, then... On that very night, I start the review. This is how serious I am on trying to review uh, one of the centenary stock and keeping my promise. Because I'm a man of my word. And I always try to keep my promises. Okay, I think that's enough uh, waffling from me. Indeed. Um, um, as far as I can think of, I don't, I don't think I've missed anything yet. Um, but if you have any questions or queries of the layouts, the locomotives, the, the channel in general, really, anything in general related to the channel, um, please comment below, ask away. I'll answer it as soon as I can. And. With me, usually, uh, replies are uh, within a day, so you won't wait long for a good reply. Until then, uh, this is up on Odd saying, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. It really does mean a lot. Take care.